when the painting came into the studio, I was aware it was going to be time consuming, but perhaps not the 10 months it has taken. The cleaning, relatively speaking, was um, straightforward, but the structural work wasn't. I didn't really know how the journey was going to progress in terms of the challenges of conservation and the solutions and the compromises. This varnish is probably at least 100 years old, very thickly applied, so it's discolored very, very strongly indeed. What always tends to happen is that the varnish takes a little while to swell and then it sort of lifts away very cleanly from a paint surface like this. Taking a really, really discolored varnish off a superbly preserved paint film, it's really satisfying. Now the cleaning is finished, the next step is to deal with the structural issues. When the painting was turned over a smaller stretcher at the beginning of the 20th century, it caused, obviously, a rupture in the paint film. The bigger problem, in a sense, was almost caused when it was turned back expediently in 2012, resulting in a lot of distortion. And that distortion basically bisected the picture. The painting is a rather stiff structure, and so the issue was to carefully take out that distortion to bring the whole support back into plane. Once it was off the stretcher and the strip lining had been removed and the excess wax had been removed, my time was taken with the structural intervention. Moisture, pressure, heat is a classic trio for dealing with canvas distortions. The painting is just over 11 feet. It's roughly about 10 sections of doing this. I leave it overnight each time and I may have to repeat it in places. And then the roller will come into play. The tube will be used to roll up the entire painting so that it can be turned over so that the face is visible. And I can work on it from the front. On the whole, I'm very, very happy with it. The picture is in plane. I think when you see it now, you see the sweep of the composition. Your eye isn't interrupted by that unfortunate severe distortion at the top of the canvas where it had been turned back and part of the picture's history. The next step, the actual stretching process. I've attached already a new strip lining which will facilitate that. Varnish has, in this period of painting, the main role is optical. And in order to get the full tonal value of the colors and tones, you need a saturating varnish. Where it's cleaned and is without varnish at the moment, it, it's rather matte and desaturated. So a final stage in the treatment will be to apply varnish. Essentially, the picture is in wonderful condition, but there's obviously retouching needed along the break. But there's also some little scratches and a few little losses in the painting. Time consuming, but minor. Conservation has reached the final stage at long last. It always is a bit nerve wracking, the spray varnish, because it's a, a big mechanical process. The amount of varnish going on is thin film. That final phase, enhances its elegance and the little bit extra saturation really allows all of the spatial relationships that Lebrun just has created to have their full impact. Framed now and about to hang on the wall. Uh, this is the first time any of us have been able to see it in the galleries and to think back to what was always a very impressive painting, but, but was affected very badly by the varnish, by the previous structural issues it had. To now see it join the collection in its full glory is truly marvellous. And it's exciting to think that this painting will now have an audience, and it's the first time on public display for centuries.